Hi friends, I'm Pastor Terry Lee. We are Okotoks Alliance Church and this is the 10 Minute Coach. Uh, I'm going to take you into 1 John chapter 2 verse 18 through 27 here. Uh, this past Sunday we were uh, in the third sermon of our Jesus Love Never Fails series and uh, in particular I called this the Truth Test. And uh, in 1 John uh, chapter 2, the end of it, John is addressing um, forces that have divided the church in Ephesus that he's been serving. And um, uh, you might find it interesting to read the first couple of chapters of the book of Revelation, which identify uh, probably the group of churches that he is, the seven churches that he is uh, addressing in 1 John. Uh, that's an assumption that's not for sure um, but what I find kind of fascinating here is and you might find this fascinating too in your small group uh, or your family gathered around the dinner table um, is that as soon as you start talking about um, uh, truth versus lie uh, I think it's easy to elevate uh, things that are our opinions into the level of essential truth and we're like oh I can never you know be with a person who believes this or that and John is, is going to get really to a fine point here in this passage. Um, he says that the one who is the liar is the one who denies that Jesus is the Messiah. Full stop. Like, so it, he puts it into a whole category uh, of, um, of significance, uh, the, the supreme truth I've called it, uh, that is, um, yeah, it's in a category all its own. So we wait for uh, those other things to be more clearly revealed so that we don't mistake what is this primary, fundamental, must not get it wrong piece uh, in here. In your small group, a couple of things, or your family, uh, a couple of things that might also be interesting Interesting is that the, um, the, the term Antichrist, which we're introduced to here in 1 John chapter 2, uh, it also shows up in 3 John, uh, only shows up in these letters. Um, uh, if, if you had asked me without me just thinking about it, uh, where's the Antichrist show up? Almost without a question, I would have said, well, he shows up in the book of Revelation, and yet that, that's not actually a term that we find there. The closest term that we find to this uh, this equivalent to Antichrist is a Paul in Second Thessalonians chapter 2 where he speaks about the man of lawlessness and that's a term that then gets connected back to some of the things that Daniel in the Old Testament said and we begin to create this broader concept of this anti-Christ, this anti-Jesus figure uh, that, that we, we imagine to be kind of a Stalin or a Hitler and I think that's rightly uh, figured, but here John is talking about antichrists, uh, the many who had been among them, so ones who were against Jesus, and so we're just kind of bringing it down to the the finest point in what John is writing here in First John, and those who have left the church have been anti-Jesus, and in particular they have gotten it wrong on this point. They have somehow come to the conclusion that Jesus is not the Messiah. Um, it may be that we, they went back to the, to the Jewish synagogue if they were Jewish. Uh, many scholars for years have thought that this is the beginnings of Gnostic, um, or, or this was uh, the result of early Gnostic thinking. The Gnostic, Gnostics believed that there was special truth that would be revealed to those who were particularly enlightened. They would know the gnosis uh, of the, and, and that resulted in particularly profound understanding. Uh, what I find kind of fascinating is the thought that people left the church saying Jesus is not the Messiah uh, and the, the suggestion is that they had some kind of other revelation. Um, this was a problem if you go back and read at the beginning of chapter of Ephesians, Paul was writing to the church there, sorry, uh, Ephesians, he was writing to the church there, but the story I wanted to reference is actually in First. Uh, in 1 Timothy, where he sent Timothy, so John Paul started the church about 54 AD, early 60s, maybe 62, Timothy was pastoring there, that's roughly the dating for uh, the f first letter that Paul wrote to Timothy, and uh, in it he's saying, uh, be on your guard against uh, people who don't, stop, don't allow people to be teaching uh, these false teachings, uh, myths, genealogies, he says, just causes division and strife. This seems to, now First John, written uh, probably, yeah, more than a decade later, uh, probably late 80s, and now by now that the church has split. So it would seem that this was a problem. They're probably related problems. Um, certainly there's, there's an, an error in how they are thinking about theology. Well, this Gnostic thinking idea, it, 
is rooted in the idea that well somebody would have this special revelation, this special understanding concerning, in this case, who Jesus is, um, and, and that sets up just this in my imagination this idea that Jesus, uh, that John rather, would be sitting across the table from someone who would be arguing with John concerning who Jesus is, like John. The disciple whom Jesus loved, you know, who was part of the three, Peter, James, and John, the closest to Jesus. This is uh, John the Apostle, the youngest of the twelve disciples, uh, who leaned against Jesus at, at the Last Supper to say, uh, who is the betrayer? Who is the man? Um, you know, I was talking to Pastor Tim about it this week, and he's like, man, John knew what Jesus smelled like, for goodness sakes, let alone who he was and could testify to this. And so we come back to the beginning of uh, the letter where he says, we proclaim to you the one who existed from the beginning, whom we have seen and heard and smelled, and we saw him with our own eyes, touched him with our own hands. He is the word of life. And it's, it's, this is the central, I use those concentric circles of, of uh, conviction, and Jesus is at the very heart of it. Dogma, that which we are, um, are certain about, um, the authority of Scripture, uh, would be a dogmatic piece uh, for most of us. Oh, it has, it's an inspired word of God and has authority in my life. Um, uh, non-negotiable. Uh, you know, the, that God is love, a non-negotiable. That Jesus is the Son of God, non-negotiable. You know, we're talking in this central layer. But, but then we tend to get messed up as the church when things that are uh, of lesser uh, certainty get elevated to this place of primary certainty. And we make it a, uh, a supreme thing when it's a lesser thing. Uh, and that's probably a point that's worth discussing together uh, in your small group as you work through the questions that are on back, the back of the sermon notes. You can get the sermon notes off the OAC app or from our website. And uh, on the back here, I've given you a number of questions to work through that I think will be really helpful to you to get back into the text and to then wrestle with some of the things. Uh, I think in particular, um, you know, question number four, um, what criteria can you use to distinguish between, number one, uh, new insights into Christian truths that Holy Spirit brings to light versus, number two, new teachings that undermine the Christian faith. Uh, think about those concentric rings as you try to answer that question. Uh, I think the other thing that I thought was kind of really helpful, uh, I got it from a scholar named Gary Berg, uh, was where the, this idea of what it means for you to the, the end to come, and now we're running alongside the end. I don't know if you remember that illustration, uh, the picture that I that I showed, and uh, you know while we're running along the edge, you know there's times of comfort and 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 security, and there are times of distress and uh, and and disease, uh, and we and anyone who's oh, there's Jesus. One of these days, it's going to be Jesus. It's going to be, and we are done. You know the end of the end has come. Uh, and we're looking forward to that day. And until that day, uh, we are going to be people who are pressing into the purposes of Jesus, uh, who are representing him effectively, and who are inviting others to follow him faithfully. And that's what this text is really about. It's about following him faithfully to the end. Don't get messed up on this central peace. I pray that Jesus would meet with you as you and your uh, life group or your family discuss these uh, really significant truths together. Uh, and I pray that uh, yeah, it would just be a rich and rewarding time. Reach out to me if I can be of help to you, Terry L. at okalliance.ca. Uh, bless you. Uh, I hope you have a rich time in God's Word. I'm Pastor Terry Lee. We are Okotoks Alliance Church, and this has been the 10-Minute Coach. Bye for now.